Um, yeah, so I just wanted to uh, connect with everyone for a couple reasons. One is obviously in the next couple of weeks, trading deadline, there's going to be a lot of topics. And uh, certainly want to make myself available today as well as probably next Monday out in Arizona and uh, just try to keep people abreast on kind of where things are going. But as you all can imagine, there'll be very little details we share other than, uh, you know, as we start looking at this, we, we know the season hasn't gone as planned. Um, certainly going to look at, at how we can take some of the players we have on this team and turn it into uh, future talent. And, you know, as we try to explore that, it um, can take many different turns. But obviously, um, my staff's going to be very busy in the next few weeks trying to uh, find ways to improve this team as we look to, uh, to the future. And I also wanted to address uh, um, Genesis Cabrera. Uh, we did uh, designate him today. And really, we just felt from a baseball standpoint, it was just time for a change of scenery. And then uh, you may have also saw that we signed uh, Ryan Tapera. And ultimately, we were trying to do that. So we have just some veteran experience because right now we are running up some younger players from uh, Memphis and just trying to add uh, somebody that uh, has some experience as we look to move forward. So at this time, I'm uh, happy to take a few questions. What do you think the issue was with uh, Hennessy's? I think the big thing, I don't think he loved the role he was in. And, uh, you know, ultimately I felt like um, as we were trying to get this to work, it just, we kept, you know, hitting some headwinds. So, you know, now he'll get that opportunity to do it somewhere else. Well, was that strictly a performance issue? Or? Uh, yeah, and I, I think it was also just on a, like a personal issue, meaning I just think he felt like he des deserves uh, – higher leverage innings and didn't always feel like he was getting it. Now, part of that's how a team's playing and, you know, when you can actually use someone who's available. And um, I don't know if uh, every player always looks at it with that kind of understanding. Hmm. Well, does what happen in the next two weeks have anything to do on what you actually do at the deadline? Um, in terms of, like, how we play, you mean? Yes. Does performance, wins, losses change our, our direction? I would say probably not at this point. Um, you know, I think where we are and, and, and where we are in the standings, it's going to make it very difficult to change that. Um, it's not to say that if we, you know, won eight straight, you, you know, you might take a pause in how you think about something. But um, I would say from our standpoint on how we're thinking about using our energy and time right now, it, it won't change. Mo, to Paris and Major League, he's your active roster now? So again? To Paris and Major League, he'll go through Yes, roster. he goes active today. Is he, will he be here today? Will he be available? I believe he reported, yes. Okay. What's next for O'Neill? He's here now. Is he, he's not active yet. Uh, I'll probably make that decision after tonight's game. Um, so really it's twofold, right? One is he'll either be activated tomorrow or we'll contemplate doing a rehab assignment. But high probability gets activated tomorrow. You identified Tapera that, as that veteran presence. How do you plan on using him on the field, though? What do you think his role will be? Um, I, I mean, we just need, like, innings out of the bullpen right now. We're just We've had a lot of inconsistency, and we're just trying to fill that. And obviously, when you create your own hole, meaning designating someone, then you just try to fill it quick. Well, your franchise 15 straight winning seasons, history of strong second halves, to not be trying to compete, how foreign is that to you guys? Well, it's definitely different. Uh, I don't know if I'd use the phrase not trying to compete. I mean, obviously, if there, if there are people that are getting moved out of here, that's just going to create more opportunity for someone else, right? And you have seen teams that, that make changes and end up doing better. So I, I feel like where this club's at right now, we just know it's not working intact, and so we do know we have to make some changes. Is there a chance in the next couple of weeks your free agency, your free agents to be you'll negotiate with them to try to lock them up? You know, I don't want to speculate on that. Um, obviously, it's not a long list to figure out who we'd be talking to and whatnot. But, you, you know, I think for our standpoint right now, it's going to be how we can improve and get more talented in the future. Well, how similar are the deals that you might explore to what you usually do in the winter? Um, I think right now it's a little different at the moment because, you know, you're dealing with, with people that are – you're doing trades that are where teams are looking to compete for postseason run now, uh -huh. versus I think a lot of times when you look at in season or I mean off season trades, it's a lot more longer term type thought process. When you look at what you want to acquire, when you talk about in the future, how near the future are you talking? Well, hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, you know, we're not looking just for s simply like a ball depth. Um, you know, if we can find talent that we think can help um, emerge 
in 2024, that would be great. 2025, I wouldn't rule that out either, but 2026 seems a long way away. So how much do you have to get a feeling for your Fury agents to be, how much they want to be here, how much it's going to take? I think we have a pretty good idea of what all that looks like. How about beyond the free agents to be? Do you look at the current roster and kind of say, he fits here, he doesn't fit? How much do you have to look at what you have, even like your starting eight, and see who's going to fit? Yeah, well, obviously we know we have some depth in some places, and so that's something that... Um, if we felt like that was a smart deal to make, we would consider it. And Lyndon, you mentioned that you would hope the Cardinals are not allowed or able to rebuild. It certainly sounds like that's the route you're not taking. So you would expect this club to be competitive again in 24. That's the hope. Um, obviously, you know, a lot has to happen for that, and, and clearly that's not going to be solely defined as what happens in the next two weeks. Um, it'll clearly be like how active we can be in the free agent market this offseason as well as um, potentially what types of deals we might be able to do that as well. Are you at all close to bringing Mason Wynn here and just say, <laughs> here's, here's the job for the next couple of months? Um, you know, I'd love what we're seeing out of him right now, um, but in terms of playing time, it'd be very difficult at this point. Uh, but, you know, maybe in early August that might be revisited. But right now I'd say it'd be difficult. What's the conversation like with someone like Ali when the shift does go from this year to 2024? Well, I think you guys understand. I mean, we talk every day. I mean, we all sort of understand where we are. And now it's, you know, how can we improve upon what we have? Um, we know this current group isn't working as a core. So, um, you know, we're going to try to shake it up and get back to winning. Same along those lines, what's the conversation like with Nolan Arnauto and Paul Goldschmidt in those terms? Um, I think they understand where we are too right now. Um, and it's not like a quick fix. It's not like we can go out and just trade for someone that's going to change our trajectory at this point. But I think when you look at our everyday club, it's an exciting team to still have in place. And so, you know, can we augment enough pitching this offseason to – to change the outcome of what we saw this year, and that'll be our goal. To get something, to get something, you have to give up something. And I think sometimes fans lose sight of that. You have some tough decisions to make. Is that how you look at this process that uh, you're? you're uh, to? You know, trades are always difficult. There, it's you know these guys on a personal level. It's it's um, always challenging, but I think everybody would agree inside behind those doors that you know what we have going right now is not working. Well, the record being what it is, were you tempted to try to do something earlier to shake it up, to add to this team? Uh, we kicked a lot of tires to try, but it's just we weren't ever really able to get anything that made a lot of sense for us at that point. Well, when you look at the players you have in the organization now and what the season looks like from August 2nd through the end of the year, do you have enough innings in your organization with players you have in-house to cover, or will you have to add even through that kind of short-term addition? Um, obviously, I think in, the, in that view, it would seem a little challenging at this point. You've done deals in the past to also kind of shake up the room, whether it was the lackey deal. Is there any need to do that, or is this simply about getting better talent? Do you think there's any chemistry kind of involved in this? I, I think it's it's a complicated question that doesn't have, like, one simple answer. But I, I feel like where we are now, that's probably not the path we're going to take. Wait, well, is there something you can identify as what led to the bottom dropping out this season? I, I think it's a combination of lots of things. Um, I think when, I, when you look back at our spring training, we had 18 people participating in the WBC. I don't think we ever really sort of gelled that way. I think from a starting pitching standpoint, you know, Wayno got hurt, which that could have happened in spring, so I'm not, you know, blaming that. I think, you know, Miles Michaelis didn't get the innings to truly prepare, so there was a slow start there. I think uh, having two-thirds of your outfield not working together had an effect, and I think three-fourths of your infield had an effect. And then... I also think the expectations were so high for this team, or, or like normal, but when we got off to that slow start, I just really feel like a lot of people started pressing. And once you do that, you always have to remind yourself this is a human game and a human element, and I think that just compounded some of our issues. And then, of course, you know, not having the depth when, you're, when you lose two-thirds of your, or two-fifths of your rotation right away, or not producing as you thought, that definitely had an adverse effect. And then, of course, you know, Matt's got off to a slow start. Nice to see him throwing well now. But, I mean, I think it was just a combination of things that led to where we are. Um, but that's why we're still pretty excited about our everyday club, that if we can, you know, fix the pitching situation, we still think there's a lot to believe in. So how does that inform what you try to do now to, to kind of to turn around and to contend quicker than to go into a rebuild? 
I, I think it really comes down to what is potentially you're able to trade for, right? When you, when you ask the question, does that mean you're looking for like, you know, really top end A ball talent or, or are you hoping it's more double A or triple A? And, you know, it's easy for me to say like, of course, we want it as close as possible and, and hopefully, you know, competing and, and, and helping this club next year. But we also have to be realistic on what all this may look like. and. I assure you, like we have a lot of things that we've been thinking about, looking at, studying, and not every possible deal we'll do will address that immediate need. Mo, well, you got Miles locked up in the off season, but you still have three fifths of your rotation wide open. How much does that have to be your focus? To, to well, I definitely think we're going to treat the trading deadline as pitching, pitching, pitching. Right now, that's not to say we're going to ignore a position player that you know may be like just uber great and mm -hmm. so we have to be you know cognizant of that but i think the goal would be to address as much pitching as possible do you need to make any deals that might free up some salary from next year so that you can spend it on pitching not really in the off season mm -mm. i mean we have a lot coming off the book so um i think for you know free agents when you think about that i think we'll have dollars is that, it's i mean it's hard to think of correct me if i'm wrong but it's hard to think of you filling out a rotation without an addition Oh, it, it'd be impossible. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, unless we make like incredible trades that somehow address that. But I don't see that even when I squint. Okay. Is, is it fair to say Goldschmidt or Arnado are not going anywhere? Do they have those assurances? Um, <coughs> I don't have any intentions of, of trading anybody like them. Um, but you know, like again, like when you have, if you're if you're willing to like listen on anything, you you have to understand but I doubt that would happen in you know in any scenario at this point but not ruling anything out at the moment but I mean both those guys have complete no trades and um, you know I think from their standpoint they really just want to know directionally what we look like for next year we can all identify the guys who are going to be free agents, but there's also three major league second basemen in that room. There's a lot of outfielder DH types. There's three catchers who don't have a lot of spot for next year. Do you have to address some of those redundancies as well as part of this? Um, not necessarily this two weeks, but again, like not not knowing what the playbook's going to exactly look like over the next uh, 14 days. I think it, you know we have to remain open-minded. We have to approach this as doing what we think is best for the organization. But, you know, I don't want people in this room behind me to think everybody's up for grabs, because it's not. I mean, we, we do like a lot of the pieces we have, but we understand that there is going to have to be some addition for us to compete next year. Well, did it take you a while to get to this point? To, to I mean, we are obviously we're being patient, but, you know, I, I could have been impatient a month ago. It's not going to change how the, the industry looks at, at the next two weeks. Mm -hmm. Would it be fair to say then that this trade deadline is just the beginning of what you hope to be a very long process in getting you ready for 24? I mean, I think it's a you know a big step um, when you think about 2024, but you know obviously it's going to put pressure on the off season as well. Well, as you look toward 2024, how do you view the catching situation? Is it Contreras and you stick with him after a rough debut here in many ways, or do you revisit that perhaps with the time of an off season? How do you look at where the catcher is moving forward? Yeah, I think we'll table that till the off season. Um, you know, obviously, uh, w when we look back at it in the short term now, uh, there's some things that, that need to change. Um, I think, you know, short view is kind of nice, what we're seeing out of like Herrera right now, which is good. But, um, you know, ultimately, I, I think when we start thinking about 2024, some of those things will have to be more addressed in the offseason. Does thinking about 24 mean looking at Herrera much more often over the next couple of months? Um, it depends on how some of the things happen with our roster, but you know clearly we do want to. We we've liked what we've seen in the short trio. Where does Tyler fit in when he returns? Uh, he will likely be our everyday left fielder. In other words, that would be the plan to have him out there every day. And then what's the trickle down of that? You've had guys in and out of DH. I mean, I know you wanted to do Jordan in DH, but then Brendan couldn't throw. Right. So. Not. Like to answer O'Neill, I can. To answer the other, I can't, because it's going to depend on when others can come back, when they can throw. Um, but you know, trying to get Walker playing time, obviously Newt playing time, of course, trying to figure out what to do with Dylan. I mean, these are similar challenges we faced in late April. Um, but uh, you know, obviously, Tyler's worked himself back to get here, and so we're going to give him that opportunity. John, you said pitching, pitching, pitching a second ago. You've got two pitchers who are going to be free agents. How much do you want those guys back? Uh -huh. Well, you know, like 
we, we hope we can get them back. But, you know, right now might not be the, the moment we get that ha to happen. But, you know, I look at where the season is, and this is a unique place for the Cardinals. And, you know, I think our goal is just to see what we can do in the, the return. Well, when, does, when you were talking about the things that kind of haven't worked out for you this season, when does depth become an obstacle? Have there been times when your depth has become a bit of a riddle as opposed to a strength? I think you and I spoke about this in San Francisco, though. Like, like yes, but when you think about it in terms of why it becomes a little bit of a, 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 a puzzle uh -huh. to put together, it's, it's, it's like when, when think back to April when people weren't like hitting their strides or trying to get yeah. going, the one thing that individuals like to do to get their stride is what? Play. To play. play yeah. And then when, when people are pressing and not, when they play, not going two for four, instead they're going over four, you have that natural reaction to be like, okay, I'm going to sit that person. And so I do think when you look back at that time period, trying to get guys on track, you know, you're, 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 that's a balancing act. And unfortunately, we just never really got it going. Now, remember, we did make a few moves mm -hmm. to try to free up some things. In May, we did play better. We started to see a little light, but then injuries happened. You know, and, and that was probably a point I should have touched on, But because if you look at Tyler O'Neill and Lars Newbar in aggregate, I probably missed the season. Mm -hmm. And so, like, yes, depth is great because you could plug and play, but those were two guys that we were counting on to have a very impactful years. How is that? How is that influencing the development of some young players too? Like, you know, Burleson and Jordan, obviously top of the line. They're yeah, I think like at this level. it's hard, and and you know, I think they're getting forced to be asked to do things maybe that the, in a, a perfect world they wouldn't have been. And you know, I think in Jordan's case, I think we would all agree. Like from an offensive standpoint, he's obviously fitting in. I think from a defensive standpoint, there's been some some hurdles or challenges. And and Burley, you know, wasn't a natural outfielder either. Um, you know, was drafted as a first baseman, and and is being thrusted in there because of the p potential offensive upside. And you know, so from just a you know ideal standpoint. I think a lot of things that have occurred with the injuries and so forth have thrusted guys into places that maybe they wouldn't have had to have been. And John, what's your level right of now? concern with uh, Tommy Edmonds' wrist injury? It didn't heal well, after the All-Star break. Is there a level of concern there? Not yet. I mean, uh, I was aware that this could take a little bit of time. I mean, we were also hoping it could have been quicker. But um, right now, I think we can be patient. Where are you right now with your view of pitching development? Obviously, had need and cycled through a lot of options, but haven't had anyone click. Hudson, is that back? I mean, Libertor, Stahl, where are you right now? Yeah, I'm still like bullish. You know, like, I mean, I still think like McGreevy is throwing well. It's good to see that Graceffo's back Tink. um, and, and Tink's an exciting arm. Um, but when you say development, like, like what needs to happen? And I think like in Anybody, like when you say like a Libertor stalls, like, yeah, we need to take a hard look at, at how we think about his curriculum. Clearly the curriculum we're going with right now is not working, so something has to change. Now, when I say that, it's not as simple as like, hey, coach, fix this, right? I mean, it, it also takes two to tango, and so the player has to recognize changes needed as well.